Welcome. Welcome to the Oral History Interviews by Team Coast Guard. I'm Richard Stevenson, the National Auxiliary Historian, your host. The purpose of Team Coast Guard Oral History Interview is to gather and record the experiences of Coast Guard veterans and auxiliarists. The interview you are about to see is with legendary golf professional Arnold Palmer. In 1951, Mr. Palmer enlisted in the Coast Guard. We will learn about Mr. Palmer's experiences in the Coast Guard and what the Coast Guard has meant to Mr. Palmer. Of course, I'm very proud of the fact that I was in the Coast Guard. I, I think it's a wonderful outfit. Do you think that the young people uh, today, including athletes, could be better grounded in their focus if they had the same kind of experience in the military? Well, I've been a little outspoken on that subject, and uh, the reason is that I feel that young people need the kind of training that they would get in, in one of the uh, military outfits, whether it be the Coast Guard or Marines or Army, Navy, uh, whatever it might be. <clears throat> I found that uh, some of us are not as quick learning as others, and in my own purpose, in my case, uh, I was at Wake Forest for three and a half years and my roommate got killed in an automobile accident. I was pretty distraught over that and decided that I, would, uh, I needed to get away and, and I joined the Coast Guard. And uh, three years in the Coast Guard and then back to Wake Forest. And, and it was tremendous difference, uh, the knowledge that that I gained the maturity that I gained in the Coast Guard was unbelievable. It, it matured me, it made me uh, a better person for the world, uh, and I believe that in my own right. So the military isn't just restrictions and, and military duties, it's learning, and it's very important that young people have that opportunity to to learn and to know themselves a little better. And I think the military helps put that in the right perspective. What made you decide to join the Coast Guard? Well, I thought it was uh, an outfit that I wanted. It was special. I thought it was special uh, in that it specialized in something. Uh, and being a Coast Guardsman, I, was, I ended up being a lifeguard for on the, in the ocean for a while at Cape May. And uh, all the things that the Coast Guard did, I thought were very exciting. And uh, had I stayed and, and longer, I would have probably gone into the flying end of the Coast Guard, which I also think. And what they're doing now, if you watch uh, some of the shows that are on television, I think that's specifically one of the reasons that I like the Coast Guard so much. Mm -hmm. When you enlisted uh, in the uh, Coast Guard uh, from Wake Forest, you went to Washington, D.C. to enlist, is that correct? That is correct. Then you went on to Cape May. For my basic training. For basic training. My first assignment after training at Cape May was a, uh, I was in the uh, training department. I was, I was kept on to uh, do physical education, uh, to teach uh, various uh, maneuvers as far as uh, personal protection was concerned for recruits, uh, such as uh, judo and some of the things that were common, uh, but help troops know a little more about what to do in a case of confrontation. and. Uh, and in that process, I, I was there for, oh, six months doing that special training. And, and like always, you always have someone in your group that is uh, objective, let's say. And one guy thought that he knew more about what I was doing than I did. And unfortunately, I had an accident with him. And uh, I didn't have a captain's mask, but I was close to it. The captain understood the situation, and that's when I was transferred. And he, he gave me a choice of selecting my station 
and I took either Washington, he said name uh, uh, two or three, and I named Washington and Cleveland. And as it turned out, I got Cleveland, which was uh, really great for me. Uh, and I spent the remainder of my enlistment in Cleveland, Ohio. I was born in Cleveland and then grew up in Ashtabula. Oh, really? So I can remember the Coast Guard station there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for a while I was in the Keith building, and then they moved us down to the lake, and I worked out of there for two years. But only during the week. That's correct. Well, even some days <laughs> I was, they couldn't find me. I was on the oh, golf course. Okay. In your book again, it mentions that uh, while you were in Cleveland and you spent the weekends playing golf and uh, at uh, headquarters working with the auxiliary, and I would like to know the kinds of things you did with respect to the auxiliary uh, during the week. Well, I was, uh, I was a yeoman in charge of the, uh, and worked for the commander who was in charge of the 9th Coast Guard District Auxiliary. And, uh, and I worked for him for a number, well, a year or two, and then uh, they moved me back to headquarters where I became a uh, photographer and, uh, and I did the uh, identification for all the uh, Coast Guardsmen in the 9th Coast Guard District. I traveled to all the stations and did photos and then took those all back to the headquarters and, and did the identification cards for the, all the Coast Guard personnel in the uh, 9th District. Mm -hmm. You've been to Ashtabula. Oh, yes. I've been to Mackinac. I've been everywhere. I've been to the whole shooting range. Were you involved in uh, any of the auxiliary programs at that time, such as uh, public education or patrols or member training? No, I didn't get into the uh, public part of the, the auxiliary. I, was, uh, I did all the paperwork and did all the checking on the auxiliary and was aware of all the things that had to be passed through the auxiliary, the rules, the regulations for auxiliary personnel. Mm -hmm. From your book, I gathered that, that you had a number of experiences uh, with officers that, that really looked out uh, for your well-being as well. Would you tell me some of those experiences? Well, no question about it. Uh, my first boss was uh, uh, Commander Weishi who was the son of the Commandant of the Coast Guard at the time. And then I had uh, my next uh, leader was uh, Commander Potts, who was in charge of the 9th Coast Guard District Auxiliary. <clears throat> and, and then eventually uh, I was uh, transferred back to uh, headquarters for the job that I had, the photography job. <clears throat> and my boss was really uh, an admiral, uh, Admiral Rainey, who uh, uh, we we made a deal uh, that if if I would stay there in the ninth district uh, and teach him to play golf, why well, uh, it would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was your most enjoyable experience in the Coast Guard? Well, I think simply being in the Coast Guard uh, was. Uh, something that I enjoyed. I, I was, uh, <clears throat> my intentions were to eventually get out and play golf and, uh, and of course my boss, the Admiral, uh, had suggested that I go to uh, a training and, uh, at the Academy and I, that was fine and I was flattered that he wanted me to do that but uh, at the same time that meant an, an additional enlistment for me and I was primarily uh, ready to get out and, and give my shot at the mm -hmm. PGA Tour. When Mr. Palmer entered the Coast Guard, he was already a well-known amateur golfer. After completing his tour of duty, there was no doubt in his mind that his service in the Coast Guard made him better prepared for a career in professional golf and the worldwide experiences to follow. An entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and an ambassador of goodwill. We, the Coast Guard team, thank Mr. Palmer for his patriotism and support.